Hello, awesome people! I hope you're having an awesome day. Um, as you've probably seen from the title, I will be talking about calling a helpline or a suicide hotline, and what happens when you call one. So, trigger warnings. Um, this episode contains mentions and references of suicide and self harm. So, um, first of all, I think many of you who have like struggled with their mental health might have called a helpline or maybe like thought about it, considered it considered calling one or something like that um however there's also a lot of people who might be listening to this who might just have never called a hotline before or never even thought about calling one and many of you have asked about what would happen when you call one so um before I s- before i start i will be talking about like what generally happens when you call a hotline but because I live in Hong Kong, so it will be mo- more focused on like the resources in Hong Kong. But I would support. I would like suppose it is quite similar to the ones in other countries. So as usual, I'll start off with my personal experience related to this topic. So I've called a suicide hotline or a crisis hotline or a helpline or whatever you call it um a few times. So I think it was. Um, I think it's approximately like around 15 times, just a bit over 10. So, um, if I remembered correctly, the first time I did it was, uh, on my first attempt and on my first suicide attempt, I remember that quite well. Um, you can hear more about that and what happened then on, uh, season one, episode three. I did talk quite a lot about those there, but today I'll stay on track on... The hotline topic and talk specifically about um the helplines in hong kong and all that so since the hotline is based um in hong kong so i'm pretty sure it does offer counseling and the operators can choose to speak in um chinese uh, so cantonese or english these two languages are the most common in hong kong so i prefer to speak english however i'm still fluent with Cantonese from living in Hong Kong for like most of my life so I did choose to speak English that day um on the hotline so um basically when you call like a hotline some hotlines I think most in the U.S. would uh play an automated mes- message so like usually saying like oh you've reached blah 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 hotline please stay on the line while we connect you to um a local center whatever like they would just play a message like that then the call would be located to like a volunteer or like a call center operator so usually um from there you just talk about your problems talk to them and that is usually just a simple call but there are a lot of issues with like these kind of hotlines i i like the hotlines it does help but for me the first time i called i had to call around like five times before i reached someone other um hotlines around uh um around the world has like, different has different wait times so some of them could locate you to a person and um in like a uh, three seconds to around 85 seconds i think but the one i used it didn't tell me anything it just when i called ringed for it says like ringing for like around um one or two minutes and then it just declined my call so it did take some time for me to call five times and to finally find um someone so uh remember this is a hotline the one i called is one i found off the internet so i searched like hong kong helplines and it was the first one so of course i expected like someone to pick up my call quite soon but turns out um they didn't have a lot of operators there so i had to wait for one of them to finish like their conversation with another person so normally a call would last around like 10 minutes 15 minutes um if it's short so 10 minutes 15 minutes but if it's a long then it'll be like um a little less than an hour but because the first time i called i was pretty nervous nervous and like things just weren't going as well as i have planned so the call did end up to last around like an hour or so however my other calls after that night i think lasted for around 
20 minutes or half an hour tops so um i did eventually get through uh the first time i called and the people there were very nice um you don't need to use names or anything and everything is kept uh confidential but if you would like to use your name you can ask them to use their name and um usually the operator would not use their name either um some um hotlines they have a name for like each operator and everyone has used that same name so you have something to you can call them by that name but it won't be their um actual name their real name um so when you actually call um you can just treat it like a normal conversation talk about yourself answer their questions answer some other questions however i would um refrain from like asking the operator their um about their personal lives or like personal questions because one it's not relevant and two um usually they would avoid that question and not answer so um from experience i know um what it feels like for a person who has anxiety and it sucks quite a lot when people reject your questions so you usually just feel really quite ignored if they don't answer it so so i just suggest not answer um not asking any questions related to their identity or just anything um personal so um okay so ultimately the goal of a suicide hotline is usually to de-escalate the situation to make sure the person calling the caller feels more um controlled and calm and so usually the operator would have like would have some experience and of course they have to be qualified to talk to a person struggling with their mental health so they would usually provide like feedback um teach some um coping skills and like recommend what to do and the next steps so um people calling a hotline just because they need to get something off their chest and feel like talking to someone um those are fine they might give you um some advice i'm pretty sure they would give you advice but it's uh very different to a person who is in immediate danger and and that is totally cool please call hotline when you just feel like calling one it's up to you you decide when is the best time for you to call so i've also called a helpline a few times after school when i was just feeling like quite down and afraid i was going to hurt myself or someone when i got back home and afraid i was gonna make like bad uh bad decisions when i got back home so i called a hotline while i was on the mtr while i was outside of school while i was just walking home and they did help a lot so okay so um there are alternatives and other ways to get help um regarding to talking to like a hotline or someone online you can also like text hotlines usually they would give you um a number on their website or something so there are a few i will list out at the end of the episode so if you need one you can always find one of the ones i recommend so i'll talk a little about what happens afterwards and what you should do so um usually people call a hotline when they're feeling stressed and sometimes um it's quite common if they want to carry out a plan Um, that includes like suicide or self-harm so it is very important to get help if you um do end up uh if you do when you end the call and you feel quite okay now and like you feel calm and your feelings are more tolerable then you should go and get help please go and get help while you are thinking properly and while you think while you can make clear and the right decisions so please um you do not have to navigate through all these like really tough feelings alone so please find your family your friends even your neighbors if you're in a crisis so please if you're considering yourself um if you consider hurting yourself seriously please go and get help and always remember you can call the emergency services so um if you live in hong kong just dial 999 so um i would like to share a few uh resources so 
if you're listening to this and you're in immediate danger, please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, the emergency services. Uh, if you are scared or afraid, I know many of you might be um, in a situation like that. Uh, you can go ahead and call hotline to get your emotions in a stable place. So if you're in Hong Kong, uh, call the Samaritans at 2896-0000. Or call the suicide prevention hotline at 23820000. And if you're in immediate danger, just call 999. So remember, you can always just um, search up hotlines online and you can find um, many you can call. So please do not hesitate to seek help or just ask for help. Um, as usual, I'll remind you that you can always find me at my link tree. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, it is in my bio, and if uh, and you can also find it on my Instagram bio. So please do contact me there for any um suggestions, uh, feedback, or if you just want to have a chat, and you tell me anything. So um, I really hope that helps. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you listen to my other episodes, and I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.